gotten on to the topic that I'm going to be talking about today, which is animals. Animals in the Bible and what animals teach us, what we can learn from animals about who we are as people and about what we believe as Christians, how animals may teach us something, may have the capacity to teach us something about who God is and what God is about in the world, which is really important stuff. There was something else that was happening while all of this was going on at a more personal level, and that was I was doing some teaching and reading in my field, which, as I said, is Old Testament. One thing I've done regularly is to teach the introductory class at the Divinity School in my field. It's typically a first-year course. It, when I started at Duke, is a one-semester course. Now it's a two-semester sequence. So over the course of a year, I go through the entire Old Testament, from soup to nuts, as they say, right? And um, it's an interesting thing to it's interesting to try and explain your field to people who are very smart but don't necessarily have background. It's interesting to try and take the latest research, the latest ideas in your area, and present it to people that don't necessarily have prior background. And it's interesting just to go through your field and to try and do it in a consistent and compelling way. And I've noticed, as I've been teaching, that my views of the field have changed, my ideas of the Old Testament have changed, and I think about it differently now than I used to. And one of the main reasons that I think about it differently is because I've been teaching it. <laughs> and when you teach something, uh, you, you learn. And you, there's always the possibility of coming at things differently. And that's happened. Uh, one of the things, one of the major ways that's happened in the Old Testament is that I have found myself talking more and more about creation and creation theology. And it seems to me that um, it's finally a very important framework, perhaps the most important framework, uh, for the entire Old Testament. And one of the real challenges in teaching Old Testament is uh, <laughs> what I call the kind of cameo approach that most of us get of the Old Testament. If we get anything of the Old Testament, we have the idea there are certain highlights, there are certain stories. Maybe they're the classic Sunday school stories. We know those stories well. But I find very often, uh, and if this is you know, the way you feel, you're not alone, most divinity school students feel like this too, it's difficult sometimes to know how to connect the stories. It's difficult to have a sense of the whole. What's the Old Testament finally about? As a kind of, uh, students laugh at me because I use this word a lot, overarching story. <laughs> overarching is my, my narrative, uh, my, my adjective in the, in the introductory course. But there is an overarching story. And, and, and what, what is it? How can we begin to have a sense, not just of the isolated stories, but how they connect together, how they fit together? And I found that uh, creation, creation theology, is a, is a helpful way of doing that. So I've been teaching. I've also been doing uh, some reading, as we do at Duke. And I've been reading some very helpful work by other folks in my field. And they've been pointing me to some things that I think Previously, I have undervalued, and previously, uh, in some cases, I just I've missed. I just haven't seen at all. Uh, and I would say that uh, one of the people who has done that is actually in the room. Uh, we're just very fortunate to have Norman Wiersbe here, who has been <laughs> doing this kind of work. And um, we've also heard uh, uh, Sam Wells in his preaching uh, talk about these themes. So I'm I'm a little abashed to be um, not only talking about this today, but a Johnny come lately to some things that people have been doing much better than I for quite some time. So I hope that'll enrich the, the conversation. I'm very pleased that we're all here. So before I dive in and uh, start talking about animals, and really what I want to do today, it's very simple. Especially this morning, this afternoon, what I'd like to do is simply to look together 
at some passages. And I would like to show you some of what I have found when I have thought about animals and the Bible, animals and the gospel, some things that have surprised me and some things that I now see differently, some things that I read differently. I'd like to look at some of those passages together, and then I'd just like to see what you think. And that's most of what I'm going to do today, so it's, it's nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, but before I, I do that, I'd like, to, I'd like to probe a little bit more this idea of, of what's really basic, what's really fundamental to, to our faith and, and to the gospel. And I'd like this to be conversational. I'd really just like to pose the question. It's okay if you don't have an immediate answer. I think it's a really hard question. It's a question we don't always ask. It's a question we don't always contemplate. What is our faith all about? What does it really mean to be a Christian? What does it really mean to live for God in the world? What's, what's the point? 